you're going to make wrong decisions as a leader. That's why you're in the position to do it, is are you growing from it? I've made wrong decisions where, hey, I, I, I took the chance on something or I took the uh, opinion of somebody and I consolidated those opinions and I moved forward. Produced by Podcast Architects. You're listening to the Lead On Podcast, where we discuss experiences in the armed forces while exploring lessons from military leaders. Welcome to another episode of Lead On, Lessons from Military Leaders. I'm David Deary with the Enlisted Leadership Foundation. And today joining me is retired Command Master Chief Joel Rodriguez, who affectionately goes by Rod. So uh, Rod, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing good, David. Always good to see you. And uh, back in the game, uh, you know, thank you uh, for the opportunity. You know, uh, Rod, I, I, it's great to see you again. Uh, full disclosure, Rod and I have known each other, oh man, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. We both, uh, yeah, we both served uh, in the Navy. I punched out sooner than Rod, but continued uh, to serve alongside him, supporting him in, in another capacity. Uh, so Rod, uh, you did uh, 30 years, a little more than 30 years. How many total years did you do? 31 years. And some 31 years. There. So, yep. so. So Rod uh, transitioned out of the Navy after 31 years. He transitioned uh, about six months ago as the Command Master Chief on board uh, the USS Abraham Lincoln, one of our 10 uh, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers in the Navy. Uh, we're going to talk about that and a little bit of, of Rod's history as we explore a leadership uh, theme, uh, something that Rod said when we talked was, grow where you're planted. And, and I think that's such an important takeaway that everybody can use. Uh, instead of looking at uh, where you're going to next, uh, but grow where you're planted. Look, maybe look in the rearview mirror of things that you've done that got you to where you're at, but grow where you're planted. But before we, we dive into that, uh, Rod, tell us about the worst piece of leadership advice that someone ever gave you. Well, hey, uh I've had many uh, bad pieces of advice that, uh, you know, you, you, you learn as you go. But uh, I, th I think one thing as I got more senior and one of the worst uh, pieces of advice was that your, your value is so high that opportunity will come around again. And, um, and just, just so you know, you know, you, you won't uh, internally see it and your value. You know, I got that piece of advice and I said, okay, I can, I can make my own movements and uh, opportunity might not come again. So uh, that was that was one thing that I really pondered and um, and took that to heart to where um, it, it led me in a direction I, I didn't want to go because um, I valued myself and and bravado and and, you know, things got in the way and, and in my own mind and I made decisions uh, based on on me. And sometimes that that's the wrong piece of advice. But that's why you take advice from different, uh, different places, different people, you know, but that was probably one of the worst, uh, advices. Your, your, your value is so high, uh, opportunity will come around again. Well, that, you know, that's very intriguing. Just thinking about that and how that <clears throat> can feed into one's, uh, ego, um, you know, and, and when our ego gets the best of us, the, you know, where we want to be humble, ego becomes the enemy of humility uh you know and so when we're making then then we find as leaders we make decisions like you said about ourselves and we forget about everybody else along the way or uh worse yet we end up using everybody along the way for ourselves um well listen uh, uh and we're going to talk about ego in a few minutes but you know i i'd really like to spend just a couple minutes so you 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 spent 31 years in the navy what what was your so for those that don't know um whenever in the navy when you become before becoming a command master chief which is a a rate in and of itself we serve in a we join as something different uh so what what did you join as and kind of explain what that is and just give us a quick you know two minute overview of your career before becoming a, a command master chief sure uh so i i joined uh january 93 from a small town in california Woodland, California, right above Sacramento, and I joined as a, as an AZ and uh, aviation maintenance administration man, 
And mind you, you know, I was the uh, first uh, to be in my family in service. So I had no idea what the Navy was, no idea, as most of us, what that rate was. I actually signed up to be an, an ABE uh, on the flight deck is what I signed up to do. And I went to MEPS and um, I got home. I remember I got home and, and um, I come from a single mom at the time. My uh, parents had separated and uh, the people at MEPS there in San Francisco and Oakland said, oh, yeah, it's going to take nine months to class up uh, to get your A school. And my mom was like, hey, you better get back over there to that recruiter and tell me you need to leave now. Uh, so my recruiter said, can you type? And uh, and I was like, yeah, I can type. I took, you know, typing back then on a typewriter. Uh, take this test. It's just like an ABE, except you're cleaner. Uh, mind you, he's an FC. No, <laughs> and, uh, he's a fire controlman. He became, doesn't do nothing with a fight deck. That's right. Uh, so I became an AZ and... Uh, Went to boot camp, went to A school in Meridian, Mississippi, which uh, aviation maintenance administration men, uh, learning back then on vids boards and everything paper, uh, you know, how to type and, and do things professionally, look at uh, things. And uh, basically uh, the, the background of that is is being able to provide a, a, um, a data point so that we're in charge of uh, keeping track of things on an aircraft so that it's safe for the pilots to go and do what they got to do. Uh, went to Miramar, shipped out to Miramar and, and worked with F-14s right away. And uh, it's just like Top Gun. It was beautiful. Uh, Top Gun had just ended uh, a couple years ahead of me, but it was still there on Miramar and being able to experience that as my first taste of the Navy, uh, a different Navy as we know it. Um, re- went through the ranks, uh, became a shipboard guy. Um, two sides of the house, you can either be kind of in the squadrons and then go to the ship uh, side of it as an eye level tech. And um, I got an NEC, went to Millington, Tennessee uh, in the early 90s and the late 90s and um, got a C school and then continued on as an I-level uh, AZ um, and went all the way up uh, to AZCM uh, right around the 20 year mark and um, and switched over. And I was over at uh, AirPack and uh, one of my mentors, uh, Tony Johnson, said, hey, you, you've, you've done everything. Uh, started enticing me to come over to um, the CMC side. So uh, Jim and, and people that were over at uh, AirPac at the time, um, helping me uh, transition. And then I was fortunate again to be a CMC for um, about 11 years um, uh, follow on tours there. So four tours, uh, five tours really as a, as a CMC uh, commands, I, I count that command senior chief tour at uh, AirPac as I switched over uh, but uh, shipboard guy, air guy, primarily a- aviation, but did did a, do a hitch uh, on a DDG and and loved every minute of it. And then got my uh, final tour. Was up in the flag world actually and came down uh, to do uh, the the carrier uh, Abraham Lincoln. So fortunate in my career to do many things. Um, but that's a little snippet of me. Thirty one years and some change, and um, and I would do it again. I think most of us and and what what fortune to me being this little um you know young man that grew up in the navy and um it did so much through that yeah you know it's uh <clears throat> so I've been out 9 years and I think I'm I would I'd be a better command master chief today uh since retiring all that I've learned uh through uh, people like you since I got out uh, and so many others as part of the Enlisted Leadership Foundation. I wish I was back to be able to use some of the lessons that I've learned. Um, so <clears throat> took you 20 years to make E9, but, the, you know, talk to us about that. There is a period of time where you sat, uh, some would say stagnant, uh, where you weren't sure if you would if you if that was it, um, tell us about that and and what kind of emotions rolled through your mind? Well, I, I was questioning myself. So uh, I was a fast starter. Uh, Navy came to me uh, really quickly. What to do? You know, it was really rigid back then. Uh, you know, we we marched around base and did a lot of things when I was a young sailor, even at my first command. So you went to lunch as a group and you formed up and you went and I thrived in rigidity uh, 
with the confines of the Navy. And then leadership started coming to me. And so um, the Navy was kind of downsizing back then in the early 90s. Uh, people were getting out at the 15 year. They could retire. They opened this aperture up. Uh, so a lot of people were getting out, which opened the rungs up kind of where we're at today to advance. And uh, I, I started uh, moving up the ladder really quickly and uh, got to a certain point, uh, 12, 13 years, and I was a senior chief right away uh, with um, a multitude of, of uh, ability, kind of working as, a, as the maintenance master chief on the ship on Nimitz, and I loved it. And uh, I was totally different leader then uh, than I, I was today, but it, it came rather quickly. What? And then I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to sure. tell us totally different leader then. What <clears throat> what kind of leader were you then? Yeah, so I I, I ruled with um, with an iron fist. I ruled with um, uh, a lot of um, in your face interaction. I was very um, I knew I knew what I I knew my job so well, and I and I invested so much time into figuring out more than being an AZ, I had to learn maintenance. I learned from a lot of technical people, AT, different rates, aviation, you know, rates. I uh, had to help me because I was just not an administrative guy. And uh, and through there, it, it was always a, a game, a pecking game of kind of who's gonna run the desk, the maintenance desk, which is the main person controlling the, the work environment. And uh, I was given that opportunity, but I got there and um, and I didn't I didn't stand for a lot of BS. And back then, my what you were looking up and the peers you were looking at, that's kind of how they ran it. So I learned from some of these older men at the time uh, uh, that that's how you do it. It's in your face. It's it's 100 percent uh, about me. And um, and it kind of got uh, to that point that that's how I was doing. I would get so amped up and. And you had to be right all the time. And if it wasn't my way, then, uh, then, you know, kind of F you, it was, it was, uh, hit the road, I'll find somebody else or I'll do it myself or I'll, I'll build a team that can do it. So that's kind of how I led. And, you know, we talk about that, David, over time, you, you just learn, like you said, you've been retired and you're continuing to learn. I, I'm learning a different aspect now. Leadership is about learning. You got to put yourself in the arena to learn. And, um, and so, uh, I, that's the way it was. People, if you ask them, you know, not a lot of many people knew me back then, uh, but there's a few out there that did <laughs> and worked for me later as a CMC. And I'm like, Rob, man, what, what the heck? Uh, totally different guy. As a CMC, uh, I, it was about people. It wasn't about the numbers. It was so much um, uh, placed on, on numbers and production and had to be certain percentages and things like that, which demanded a certain level of attention continually. And anybody that runs a desk, any old maintenance master chief that you know, I was just a young guy in an old man's game and I thought that was the way. And um, and so I, I ruled with an iron fist and, and I didn't take much. And, and I learned over time that that wasn't the right way. No, you, you, that ego, right? That ego got in the way. It, 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 yep. it like we talked about, and <clears throat> it, it became about you. And uh, and for those that don't know, senior chief, so a master chief uh, in the enlisted E1 through E9, a master chief is an E9. So a senior chief is an E8, one, one right below it. In the Air Force, it's also called a senior. And so it took you 12, 13 years to become a senior chief, which is very fast. Um, and how, but then you sat there for like eight years, seven, eight years, didn't you? That's right. So um, I transferred off the ship uh, having that job and, um, and I left. I was like number three on the on the ship. I thought I was going to make nine right away, and um, I went to the wing uh, there at North Island, and I I kind of moved around. I thought I was going to AMD. Went to a different position, but I, I went there for the people. I went. I walked in the door, and I knew a bunch of people there. And and most of our job is about who we work with and and for. So I walked in, but um, it was just, what I didn't know is uh, in the the helicopter world. It was a dumping ground where the wing uh, doesn't really send their best. Um, and I stagnated for multiple years. And um, I took two promotable evals. I took a P, you know, you're welcome aboard P. And everybody uh, said, hey, you know, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take a P, but we'll help you next time. Well, nobody advanced. And that's key, you know, and uh, nobody advanced. Nobody in front of me advanced. So 
Next year goes around. I was in charge of a bunch of things. I was the leader on the team, the travel team that did a bunch of inspections. And lo and behold, with all that work, all that travel, uh, I was slid across the table uh, another promotable eval. Even though I thought I was higher in structure uh, in the ranking than, than that. And what a humbling feeling. But uh, I quit. You know, my story is I, I, I quit. I thought they had... Um, you know, killed my career. I was boisterous about it. And again, then this mindset of being this young, hungry guy that had moved up so quickly. Uh, and here I was taking back to back promotables, which um, if anybody knows that that's a death sentence for, for most of us. Um, and I struggle with that. I struggled in, in my good leader uh, as time went on there at the wing, knowing that I wasn't going to advance with those evals for maybe three to five years to wash them out. Um, you know, it took my, my maintenance master chief, uh, little Pat Manzanilla, um, love that guy. Um, John Goosby was my Lieutenant, uh, Russ Harden was my, was my maintenance master chief, uh, on the, uh, on the training side, but he took me around and said, you know what, Rod, you're still a good leader. Um, you know, don't quit, get back in the game. You know what you it might not ever come it's one percent to master chief you're fighting for so much and that whatever that title is if it's destined to come then work towards it but uh let me help you let's look at your record and that was the first time that somebody had actually sat down and told me a board process sat down and looked at my records uh sat down and said hey you're you're doing all this stuff but you're forgetting about the little things and pat sat me down and did that and as you know, our evals in the Navy only come once a year. You only get evaluated once a year. So it's not a, it's not an easy fix. You have right. to put in uh, multiple years to change the, the, the time, the, the course of the tide there. And so he was really on me. Stick with it. Let's change it. Get back in the game. Uh, and, and I had stopped for, you know, they were calling me at home. I had left and walked out. And uh, my maintenance officer called me and said, get your butt back in here you're too good for this. And, um, uh, and seven years, it took me to make nine, uh, three more evals after that talk with Pat, uh, my maintenance master chief and that soap time as a senior chief. Cause I got back involved in so many different things and people it wasn't about maintenance. It was just about the, the entirety of what I was missing, uh, made me a better master chief, made me a better, command master chief over those those seven years after getting excelled so fast of what i wanted and then it starts messing with your brain am i still a good leader what's happening other people are advancing in front of me somebody maybe less uh who i thought you know was a, a less of a peer or they're way behind me you know somebody that was a first class when i was a senior chief is now my peer now my competition per se as a master chief and they were advancing to taking the spot. And in our rate, you know, you're only making one or two back then. You only make one or two masters uh, as an AZCM. And um, it was all right there. And uh, and then it, it didn't come forever. Um, if I could tell the story of when I got the call to, to uh, that I made nine. So I was at, I was at AirPack. I'd just gotten there and uh, there was a bunch of us up for it and, and, and we were, we were running pretty good. I was, uh, involved right away in the command. Um, Jim DeLozer just left Tony Johnson had taken over and, uh, it was kind of cool. So, um, actually, uh, Jim might've rolled before, but anyway, the, the noise was down there. We made 11, uh, mass chiefs, uh, nine mass chiefs that year. And, uh, and they were screaming down the hallway. And I remember the, the cause came down, uh, and, uh, Del Bull and he walks in and I knew the list was out and I heard people screaming, you know, they must've made it right. He comes in and he, and he's like, you, you know, what I'm going to tell you. And, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've already been said no for so many times. Right, so many you know, times. Yeah. Put me out to pasture or whatever. He said, you made it. And I just looked at him like, you know, I, it was a relief. And he's like, people are crying down there you know, people are overjoyed and here you are, nothing. And I said, sir, you know, it's over. I, I made it. You know, I, I, what do you want to do? 
and he, I was like, I'm going to go to the courtyard and call my wife and tell her we made it. Um, and he's like, nothing, no emotion, no nothing, no crying. And I said, sir, you, you just don't know my story. Yeah, 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 I've been yeah. waiting for this. For all those emotions were the, the four other times I was up, uh, you know, five times here going. And uh, just, I, I finally, it was like, okay, I, I, I put the stamp. So I, I tell that story to my sailors on, on the ship. Of, I've been in your spot. If you're in a first class, a second class, and you're spinning your wheels, I've been in your position. Hey, I've been a, a second class for seven years. You know, how can I make first? You still got to get after it, man. You know, there's still opportunity for you. If, you know, unless you're getting out tomorrow, uh, you can do it too. You know, stay the course. You're, you're listening to a conversation uh, with Command Master Chief Retired, uh, Rob Rodriguez, uh, sharing with us uh, just the patience it, it took him uh, waiting for eight years uh, to promote. You know, Rod, I want to... Uh, you, so you covered a lot of uh, a lot of real estate over the last few minutes, and you know talking about your ego. That um, you, you know when you when we promote really fast. So clearly, I'm doing things the right way, or else I wouldn't have promoted. So clearly, you're so so. in what you described with um, up to the point as a senior chief, uh, you were somewhat of a positional leader, leading with an iron fist. And it wasn't. It was later in your career uh, that you realized or learned that leadership's about relationships, um, that if people are ever going to trust you as a leader, uh, you have to establish a relationship with them. Uh, and, and, you know, we're all going to follow our leader because of that position. That doesn't mean I'm going to like you. It doesn't mean I'm going to work hard for you. I'm going to do the minimum for you. Um, so was there ever anybody who maybe pulled you aside uh, and that, that maybe was the first person to, to, to point this out. Yeah. Uh, so I run in the desk again. I, I, it, I was so bad and, and I know some sailors are going to watch this, but I would lock the door uh, in production control to, to start my meeting at seven o'clock. If you were late, it was my meeting. You can wait. Um, and if you weren't prepared, cause I had already done my, preparation an hour before you even showed up i was getting there at five in the morning uh, but anyway one day um first class mostly you know some first classes and chiefs come to my meeting first class came was unprepared uh threw them out go get your chief chief come down female um at and i'll, I'll leave her name out of it but uh, i started just going at her like, Hey, you didn't prepare your, you know, production lead. You could have come down here and, you know, done it yourself, but you gave it to him and he messed it up and you weren't ready. And, um, and I just started going at her and she's like, Hey, what are you doing this to me? Uh, you know, it's out in the open. And I said, this is my office. I'll do whatever I want to. And I just kept going at it. Boom, boom, boom. She's like, so you, you're, 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 you're pressing your chief down in front of, uh, the junior sailors yep. as well. Okay. Right there um, in PC, S6 was right there. Supply was right next door. And I was just let her at it. And, and um, uh, she's like, hey, let's go on a walk in the hangar bay. And I'm like, whatever. Not right now. And she's like, come on, let's go. So, and mind you, this is, um, a, you know, at the time a junior chief and, and I was a senior chief. And so I went out there in the hangar bay and we walk around and she was kind of telling me what had happened, blah, blah, blah. And, and she's, you know, what basically the synopsis was, you, you're going to need me one day, Rod, uh, you know, on, on your team. And, and I was like, no, I don't, I, I don't need you at all. And in the moment, you know, I, I, I didn't want to hear it. Right. And talk about my ego is about me. Um, so then about six months after that conversation. So it, it still went on and I was still in, uh, this was on deployment. So just really heightened. Um, and it hit me like I need all 26 chiefs in AMD to be on my team. It's not about the five that are running maintenance. It is about those pieces that are in the shop doing the diligent work. It's about the, we, not the me. And, uh, the light bulb went off and I was like, man, she was right. You know, it was that, um, that conversation hit me 
And uh, I, I need everybody. It was like, you know, why, why push them away? Why push the team away? Um, it, it's not going to function that way. It, it, it might in the moment, it might in a, a couple months, but over time, driving people away and, and um, kicking them in the teeth, you know, is especially at the peer level, um, is is not the way to go. Um, and and so uh, from there, it was turning around and, and starting change. And, and uh, I got the opportunity to, to be the department of LCPO and, and some other things. And, and I needed the team. Um, didn't need just the five guys and, and myself to, to run the show. Uh, such a lesson learned, uh, but courage from her to yeah, talk to me. A lot of courage. Yeah. And, uh, did, and did, again, did I didn't you, see it right away. I just didn't think, see it right away. Do you think you would have seen it over time or, or do you think you saw it quicker because she had the courage to, to point it out? Oh yeah. I, I don't think I would have seen it at all. Mm. I, I think I would have just kept going down the, the path that I was going because it was working, you know, it was really yeah. working. We were, um, you know, How about the numbers. Yeah. 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 It was, it was all about, about the numbers. numbers, not necessarily about how people felt. It was yeah. just get the job done. So and we did so we did back to back deployments, and, it, and so uh, we went on another deployment, and that's where that's where it all down paid off. You know, so growing what you're planted, and you, and so you you talked about during that seven eight years, uh, you refer to that as soak time at one point. Um, so in that soak time, in that time that you had to wait. Um, where did you learn this grow where you're planted piece? Uh, I don't assume, I, I, it, was that something you learned early or was it something, you know what, let me just worry about growing where I'm at now for the people, not for my, uh, for me as a person, for the people I have the honor to lead, not for the next promotion. Yeah. So it, I, it, it came from learning, uh, it's, it's, it's not necessarily where I see myself wanting to go. It's where I'm, I'm needed most. And, uh, and I, and sometimes you don't recognize it yourself. Other people can tell you, this is the path where you're supposed to be. This is where you're supposed to be now. Um, this is where you're best useful. And when that clarity comes to you, uh, it, it changes your dynamic. It truly does. And you're able to see, that uh, this is where I was supposed to be. Um, and then it, uh, I started doing stuff for people, which changed my perspective on, on a numbers game. Uh, I started sitting in for the CMC. Um, John Cruzen had, had, was my CMC at the time. He transferred um, and we got Ray Burris who had come off the boxer from the movie and everything when they shot the, the seals and all, and they, the mirror skin, all, uh, all that stuff. And he was retiring and he, he gave me an opportunity to start sitting as a CMC. And I started seeing people aspects and, um, it wasn't, it wasn't just, um, a thing it was a, it was a human being and getting involved with in seeing people do those things. And uh, that's why I enjoyed the CMC. And I was like, man, if I could just, uh, get rid of my daily job, <laughs> right? And work just about do... people and not uh, this AZ stuff. It would be great, but you know, not doing two things uh, is is tough. Uh, and you know that's why nobody wants to sit in for the CFC until it's they, all the people. Well, stuff. I can always do the CFC's job better too. You're the CFC, you look kind of crazy. Uh, nobody wants to do it, but I was like, man, now I have to go back and do my job. You're fixing people problems, and you go back. And, um, and then I, later on as a CMC, um, I, I, you know, I messed up too, you know, and, and, um, I didn't want to go some places where I gone and, and again, it was, um, grow where you planted, man, go, somebody's telling you to go there. Maybe it wasn't the right choice. Maybe it was, uh, you know, I'm a believer in, in, in God and put me in there and in that opportunity, um, which opened up the door you know, for other opportunities. And, and I didn't get always get what I wanted up front. People, people want the, they want it so fast and they want it now. And, and that's a humbling fact sometimes. And, uh, then you wake up and you get to where you're actually, um, 
at the new command or whatever, you're like, this ain't so bad. This is pretty cool. I have an opportunity here to do something, uh, skills that I learned somewhere else and, and, and turn something around. And maybe what I'm envisioning is not uh, what was meant to be. Um, and that's just kind of like how my career went is, you know, people said, oh, I was in San Diego. Yeah, for 30 years, I, I truly was. But some of it by choice, some of it not being told to. Um, but man, I just learned a lot about myself later in life, and and uh, and we get we get training on that. You know, people don't understand the investment in CMCs, the schools that I went to, formal leadership, learning about yourself, um, and and how you you vision people and and how you envision yourself. And uh, I I just I loved it. I took took on those things, and and I was able to be successful in places that I I didn't think I was supposed to be there or wasn't in my lane. You know, it, it is obvious that you loved it. Uh, I've talked to many sailors over the years that served with you. Uh, maybe not the ones served you, with you as a it's leading with an iron fist, but definitely a lot as a command master chief. And uh, you, you, uh, I'm sure you left awake of future command master chiefs, or if nothing else, future leaders that are growing where they're planted, that realize that it's about the people, not about the person, and uh, that that where you're at is where you're supposed to be. So do the best you can there. And if that means that's the last promotion, uh, maybe it's your last command. You know, if you left there leaving a, a, a positive imprint, it, it, you know, it, it, then, man, it it was all worth it. Um, and, and, you know, to make E9, you said it's the 1%. We, we focus a lot on the E6 level because there's so many. It's like, in the Navy to make chief petty officer, if you don't become a chief, it's like you're, you failed somewhere. When in fact, it's uh, on an average, it's 20%, maybe 19% ever make chief. But then when you get into like AZs or ITs, it could be even lower than that. Um, but with this mindset uh, of a few things that, that you spoke of, you know, move the ego out of the way. Don't lead with an iron fist, grow where you're planted. Uh, and embrace the soak time that you're at. Uh, man, uh, we're all going to come out and be on this side of the blue line. Uh, and all these things are just going to benefit uh, benefit us and those that we have the privilege to lead. Um, so, you know, Rod, I, uh, we're just about out of time. And, and if, I don't, if I don't come to an end here, we're going to keep talking and talking and and you really, you, you had some great points, shared some great stories. I hope some of the people that listen were those that, whose name you dropped. Um, and I hope others that hear this will uh, heed some of your advice. Um, but speaking of advice, you know, uh, what, two things. So first, what, what quick piece of advice can you lead people, leave somebody? And what is the one leadership you know, have you ever had a leader made a leadership decision that almost it's like, man, I, I dodged a bullet on that one. One of those bad things are like, oh, boy, that that could have really backfired. I'm glad that I'm glad I got out of that. Uh, so I, I guess to 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 answer both of those, you know, I, I made a bad decision, you know, multiple times. And, and, I, and I won't, you know, take too long here, but the. You're going to make wrong decisions as a leader. That's why you're in the position to do it. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, are you growing from it? And, and I've made uh, wrong decisions where, hey, I, 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 I took, took the chance on something or I took the uh, opinion of somebody and, um, and, I, and I consolidated those opinions and I moved forward. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think... We all have to be in the game to, to make those things, but um, you're, you'll be better for it. I can't really, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put, put my finger on one, but um, but to leave it, I'll leave it with this. What, what I would love to tell young sailors is put yourself in, in the arena to, to make decisions early, fail early and often because they are so impactful when you're the command master chief, when you're the chief. If you learn those lessons early that, oh, man, that didn't work. Oh, man, uh, this tactic or or my uh, uh, 
abruptness is not going to do it. Um, you will be so much better later. And, um, and I was going with so many things um, to, to lead a mess, but I, I told him show up and show up means many different things to different people. Uh, but to me, you're come prepared, you're ready and you're showing up for your people. Uh, so if we just all show up, uh, we'll, the Navy will be better for it every single day. You have the opportunity to lead and, uh, and you should be thankful for that opportunity. And one day you're going to be the chief and you're going to say, man, I wish, you know, I could have done it better than him. And then you are him or her. And it's, it's not easy. Leadership is not easy. Um, it is a game that, uh, or it is a, it is a skill you have to hone and, and continue to sharpen yourself. And if you do, um, the rewards are, are, are sweet at the end. Um, and you can really thank yourself of saying, Hey, the journey was well worth it. Man, that, those are some good rods, uh, good rods. Those are some, <laughs> those are some, those are some great words, Rod. I, I appreciate yeah. that. And, and I, I take that to heart as well. Uh, Rod, I appreciate your time with us today. You've been listening to Lead On, Lessons from Military Leaders, a uh, conversation with Command Master Chief Retired Joel Rod Rodriguez. Uh, I'm David Deary with the Enlisted Leadership Foundation. Tune in uh, next time for another episode of Lead On, Lessons from Military Leaders. Produced by Podcast Architects.